Hello everyone I hope you are doing great In today's class I will show you how to create a handcrafted type plastic basket in blender using the tissue add-on as shown on the screen I have already made a video on the tissue add-on before so if you have not seen it you can click on the link above to watch it without wasting any time let's get started with today's class First I will separate one face from the default cube and delete the rest. Then I will set the origin of the face to the center of the geometry and move it to the world's origin. After that I will create a seamless pattern from this plane. I will copy the z-axis position of this edge and paste it into the z-axis position of this edge to ensure the pattern is seamless. Now I will select all the faces and press Ctrl plus B to bevel them resulting in this shape. Then I will duplicate the entire object and rotate it 90 degrees on the z-axis creating a seamless pattern like this. I will select both objects and press Ctrl plus J to join them. Now I have a complete single object with a seamless pattern. Now I will add a cube and subdivide it then design the desired shape of the basket. Now I will first select the pattern then the design shape and click on tissue if you don't have this add-on enabled you will not see it here to enable it you can go to edit then preferences then add-ons and enable tissue add-on from here after enabling the add-on first select the pattern and then the shape click on tessellate in the tissue add-on panel Make sure that quad is enabled and then click OK. You can see here that the pattern has seamlessly adapted to the shape, resulting in the creation of the basket shape. Make sure to name each object properly so that you can easily identify them when hiding or unhiding. And in the object data, you will find the properties or settings for tissue tessellate where you can adjust its settings from here we need to check the merge option and set the merge value such that the overlapping vertices are merged you can also change the scale value but for this example i think a value of 1 is fine now i will add the solidify modifier after that if i make any changes to the main shape I can also apply those changes on the tessellated object I will make some changes to the main shape to apply these changes to the tessellated object after selecting the tessellated object I will click on the refresh button here and the changes will also be applied to the tessellated object. You can also come into the settings and check the smooth shade option here. Now I will work on designing the top part using the duplicated face loop from the main shape. To isolate an object in Blender, you can press the slash key on your keyboard. This will toggle the isolation mode, allowing you to focus on the selected object while hiding others. Now I will duplicate an edge loop from here and separate it so that I can use it for designing. After separating the edge loop, I will delete this object. Now I will add a spiral curve for the design that is rotated around the object on top. 
If you don't see these options, you need to go to the add-ons, type extra to enable the extra curves option from there. Then I will add a spiral curve. I will add the required values in the settings for the spiral curve. Then I will rotate it 90 degrees along the Y axis. After converting it to a mesh, I will select all vertices and extrude them. Finally, I will scale all vertices along the Y axis to create the required shape that I want to rotate around the top part. I will apply the array modifier and ensure that the merge option in the array modifier settings is checked. Then I will move this object to the words origin and apply the transformation to the curve as well. Next I will add the curve modifier to the object I created, selecting the curve in the curve modifiers options. I will scale this object slightly to fit it according to the top part's dimensions. It is aligning well now. I will also move it slightly on the Y axis. Now it looks better. I am going to increase the count value in the array modifier to cover this entire part completely. I will duplicate this and hide it to create the part for handling, later I will use it. I will apply the modifiers added here and this part will be completed. In edit mode, I will select all vertices and merge them by distance to make sure all overlapping vertices are merged. After that, I will add a solidify modifier and a subdivision modifier. Then I will add a circle and create the shape for the handling part of the basket. Now I will unhide the duplicated design and remove the curve modifier because I will use that part for the handle. I will convert this handle shape to a curve and make a copy of it to hide for later use. I will apply a curve modifier to the design and select this curve in the option. I will scale it to match the required shape just like I did for the top part. I will now unhide the curve I duplicated earlier. In the object data properties, I will go to the geometry options and set the depth value. I will move it slightly so it stays inside the shape. Then I will convert it to a mesh and add a subdivision modifier and set it to shade smooth.
some parts of the object might be sticking out. So I will go into edit mode, select the areas that are sticking out and move them inward. After that I will apply materials to these objects, add lightings and render the scene. I hope you learned something from today's class. We will meet again in the next class with a new tutorial. Until then goodbye and take care.